Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's August 17th. These are your headlines. First up, the rumor mill concerning Albies is already burning out of control. I'm going to cut through the mustard on that and get you guys the truth. Also heard of a landmark catch on Cape Cod this week, a large tarpon. Got some details on that. And we're hearing about some inshore tuna with inside of land uh, along the South County of Rhode Island area. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items to send you away, and the first one comes to us from Black Hall Outfitters. They're having their Hobie Demo Day, which is really Demo Weekend, um, this Saturday and Sunday, so that's the 19th and 20th of August, and this is kind of a big deal. Um, if you're in the market for a Hobie kayak, you definitely want to be there. Um, they are going to have pretty much a full lineup of the fishing kayaks offered by Hobie and you can get in them, paddle them, pedal them around in the water and uh, get a good feel for which one might be the best for you. In addition to that, they're going to have many of the Hobie pro staffers there so you can ask them questions about the kayaks and sort of even dial in even further uh, which one might be the best fit for your style of fishing. And every Hobie kayak this weekend will be 15 to 25 percent off. That's hundreds of dollars off the MSRP. Um, and as if that weren't enough, if you do make a purchase, if you do buy a Hobie kayak at Black Hall Outfitters this weekend, this is their Old Lime location, you will also get a goodie bag filled with kayak-themed gear, which is going to make your new boat purchase even better. Um, it's, uh, seriously, it's a can't-miss event. Why would, you, why would you skip that? Especially if you're, in the, uh, if you're in the market for a new kayak. And as if all that weren't enough, there's also going to be like a huge raffle. So uh, you definitely want to check that out. Again, that's Saturday and Sunday, the 19th and 20th this weekend at their Old Lime location. So head over there and, uh, and check that out. Next up, we're going to take a quick look at what's gone on in the Dream Boat Challenge this week. We had two fish hit the board this week in the Dream Boat Challenge. The first was a 2.75 pound sea robin entered by Tri Koo, landing him in seventh place for the category. Then we had a 10.95 pound fluke entered by Kyle Krause, landing him in seventh place for the flatfish category. The top three somehow avoided change this week. We have Luke Citrarelli sitting in third place with 13 points, Eddie Terrabile holding in second place with 18 points, and Bobby Cifarelli still leading the event with 25 total points. Keep an eye on Kyle Krause, though. He's waiting just off the podium with 12 total points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21-foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And now we're going to get a quick review from the fisherman's Tim C. Smith about a little, safe, little piece of safety gear that can fit in your pocket but could save your life. It's the Garmin InReach. This is a non-biased review of the Garmin InReach. I bought this little unit last year, so it's not sponsored by anybody. This is the time of year when you're offshore chasing tuna and other pelagic species. Safety is no accident, so having a satellite communicator like this will give you peace of mind. When things go wrong, it happens quickly, and you can't always rely on your VHF to get the distress signal out. The Garmin InReach has an SOS button so that you can be rescued no matter where you are in the world. Of course, this comes with a price. There's a monthly fee from $15 a month to $65 a month, depending on your needs. The Garmin InReach will connect through your Bluetooth to your phone so you can send out a text message to anybody without having cell phone service. Another benefit is this unit will track your location every 10 minutes and post that position on a private website that you can share with anyone. The unit is not cheap at $400, but that's a small price to pay for your safety. Whenever I travel, the unit comes with me, hiking, fishing, off-roading. The Garmin InReach has many other features. I just touched on some of them. On the negative side, I wish I could send photos through the satellite communicator. Who knows, maybe that's a feature for the future. The bottom line is, I would recommend this Garmin InReach. This is Tim C. Smith for TheFisherman.com. 
And we'll wrap up the news with a uh, little rundown of the uh, giveaway, which is ongoing. This one's going to wrap up on October 25th, so you've got a long time. Uh, we're going to give away a Yozuri prize package. It's going to be a Twitch bait in there. There's going to be some uh, monster shots in there. There's going to be some leader material in there. Uh, might throw a few things, uh, a few other things in there as well. Um, the photos have been coming in pretty steadily, but there's no clear winner so far. And uh, by now, you guys probably know the drill, but we'll run through it really quickly. Um, basically, it has to be a recent catch, and it's got to show you with your fish. So you got to be holding the fish. Can't be your foot or something like that. And uh, outside of that, it doesn't really matter to me if you caught it in New England, if you caught it in New Jersey, or if you caught it in New Brunswick. Uh, any one of those things is fine with me. And uh, you just got to get them into me at danderson at thefisherman.com. Just make sure you put contest or giveaway in the uh, subject line, or you can text them to the number on the screen. I'll compile the photos, and then we'll pick a, pick a new winner and probably start another one after that. Now jumping over into the reports, we're going to start up in Maine. Uh, these cooler days and nights have seemed to inspire some movement on the part of the striped bass up in Maine. It seems like the fall run might just be barely creaking into gear up there. Uh, I've heard of quite a few bigger fish this week, especially for the kayak crew. Um, many of these fish have been in the low to mid 40 inch range, even a couple into the upper 40 inch range, and uh, just seeing some movement beginning up there, which is kind of exciting. Heading down over the border back into Massachusetts, uh, let's start things off with James Jukes. Outside of Surfland here this morning, I just got finished with a little session out in the ocean front. So uh, as far as the report goes, the freshwater guys are still doing well, catching them up all over the river. Um, out in the surf, this past weekend was quite well. Uh, my buddy Aaron had a fish that was close to 38 pounds. I had three that were just over 30. Uh, he did have a few other fish that were over 30 as well. So uh, a bunch of fish in the 20 pound range. Uh, the guys over in Gloucester, I gotta say, they've been doing well. A lot of top water action, bluefish, bass on the surface in the mornings uh, the guys north of here same thing they've been doing well the only problem that i see is these freaking bugs drive me nuts anyways uh the report is good so uh everybody doing well oh uh as far as uh catching over the weekend i had fish on my eels and my buddy Aaron basically outfished me with his uh, metal lips uh, in particular gremlin slim so keep in mind uh, keep switching up your lures and find out what they're eating also visit your local tackle shops they could use the business and they will point you in the right direction in most cases uh, This new moon, uh, new moon that's happening right now, uh, our tides up here are pretty eh. So, got to keep fishing them. Whew, boy. Uh, little tip of the week there is if you're walking down the beach fishing, make sure you turn around every 50, 100 yards to look back and see the water. Uh, could be a change in the water that you didn't notice walking down. Turn around and check it out. You might find yourself a little hole. All right, Dave, that's it from this week. Heading kind of straight east from there out into the, uh, out to Jeffrey's Ledge. We are hearing about an increase in the tuna action out there and good sharking out there as well. Uh, the next, next stop is the Boston metro area where I've been hearing about some good striped bass fishing. Um, some nice fish in like the low to mid 40 inch range again there. And uh, a lot of the damage has been being done at night on live eels, and it's been boat and surf. So 
Uh, some very good fishing out there for striped bass right now. Heading out to the beaches of Cape Cod Bay out on the Cape. Um, definitely hearing some better fishing out there, both from the surf and the boats. Uh, there's been a lot of bait showing up along there. They got some mackerel, they got lots of peanut bunker coming along the beaches. I uh, see some silver sides and some bay anchovies. A lot of a lot of bait movement right now, which is inspiring a lot more feeding uh, on the part of the striped bass. One place where we're not seeing an increase in stripers right now is the outer beaches. Um, for the second week in a row now, things have been pretty slow out there. Uh, guys I talked to that put in a lot of time fishing out there have reported meager results. Um, sure, it's just a lull and it'll pick back up, for, but for now, uh, I might avoid the outer beaches. Uh, if you head offshore from there, though, there is a decent bluefin bite going on. It hasn't been crazy, but it's been pretty good. Hearing about a lot of fish caught on jigs um, over the last week or so, so that's that's good stuff. Uh, the best striper fishing on Cape Cod right now seems to still be around Monomoy. Uh, out in the rips, still a lot of nice fish being taken out there, and a good mix of sizes. There's some slot fish out there, and there's some overslot fish out there up into the low 40-inch class. Um, commercial season for stripers just closed, so um, probably going to see even more of those fish uh, showing up out there now because they're not going to be being removed from the fishery. And then as we get into New Nantucket Sound, that's where things get kind of exciting. Uh, that's where the uh, where the tarpon was caught. Um, this fish was caught by Hans Brings, and um, it was caught while sharking. So chances are it was caught on like a big bloody chunk of bait or maybe like a half dead eel just kind of writhing there on the bottom but you know any tarpon would be an exceptional catch but this thing's big you know I mean look at this it's it's got to be pushing six feet long and uh, you know my modest guess is that it's over a hundred pounds um, I think it's probably quite a bit past 100 pounds but I'm no tarpon expert so uh, don't quote me on that but in in either case it's a landmark catch and big congrats to Hans I mean what a what a catch um, the other thing is this has been the area where we're hearing a lot of Albi reports and I did some snooping around this week because I have a really hard time believing Albi rumors um, because they get so blown out of proportion every year so I made or five phone calls this morning, talk to guys that fish the area, talk to guys that are hardcore Albi fishermen. Um, and I talked to Doug uh, from Dick's Bait and Tackle out on the vineyard, and he basically described it as a thousand boats chasing one fish. Uh, but he did say there was one day last week that it really did seem like the Albies were coming in. Uh, they had some, some crazy action out there, but it was, seems now like it was an isolated pod of Albies that a lot of boats got on and then they just kind of painted the rest of the area with the same report just saying hey they were here they must be everywhere well that has not been the case uh, I talked to Skip Bandini from Fish Bandit Charters he said yeah I caught an Albie this week but I caught it on a deep diving plug uh, while fishing for stripers and it caught me completely by surprise he's been out there every day this week and hasn't seen a single Albie break uh, I talked to my buddy Greg who does a lot of shore fishing for Albies along that area and he just said nothing doing and then I talked to Tony from Mako's Bait and Tackle because uh, there were some rumors that there were Albies in the west end of the canal. He said, you know, there's a lot of small bait in the canal and there's a lot of small stripers in the canal. So maybe, you know, guys throwing big plugs at small stripers and not getting hits just assumed that finicky fish must be Albies. So I think we can, you know, kind of pull the reins back a little bit on the Albie fishery for now. I think, you know, there's some have shown up and it's going to continue to get better, but it's not time to fill the tank just yet. Uh, going back to the Nantucket Sound, Vineyard Sound region, the good news is there are a lot of stripers along the Elizabeth Islands, and guys are doing exceptionally well on live eels right now. Getting up closer to the canal, as we sort of already touched on, there's a lot of small bass in the west end of the canal and then all throughout the main body of the canal. Uh, guys fishing outside the west end are finding some fluke. The fluking out there has been decent, um, but for a little bit more on what's going on in the canal proper, let's toss it over now to East End Eddie. Got an early east tide behind me here on the Cape Cod Canal. Fishing has not been as good. The tides are upside down right now. Uh, striped bass are harder to find than a Republican in South Boston at this time. But uh, the good news is that yesterday was a uh, new moon, August 16th, and there's another uh, super moon coming at the end of the month. So hopefully that pays off for uh, some better fishing action. In the last week, the only uh, striped bass that I've heard about were, were caught by uh, some slot fish by, uh, by Bill Smith, a local angler from Bourne, 
a uh, great fisherman, experienced canal rat. He landed some slots toward the west end uh, with a white pencil. And uh, But most guys have been feeding uh, bluefish uh, soft plastics because a pretty good sized school of bluefish moved into the canal on Friday morning and they decided to stay. And so guys are getting bitten off left and right. Uh, Ken LeBlanc from uh, South Grafton, who's a member of the Worcester uh, Surfcasters Club, was fishing Friday morning. His savage got bit in half. He replaced the tail, and uh, the next morning, the same log got bit in half again. Of course, uh, you know, 95% of that time, bluefish will bite right below the hook on the uh, on soft plastic, so it's frustrating. It'd be nice if your lure is ruined, if at least you could catch the fish, but usually you don't with bluefish. But the way, one way to avoid that dilemma is uh, Chuck Franks used a, uh, a Super Strike uh, white bullet, his favorite law the other day. He was fishing toward the east end, and he got into a topwater bite and landed a bluefish with that. And a bluefish can't bite that in half. So the other day I was riding my bike out of the west end in the dock, 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I'm heading east. And just when I get to the first big cement block right in the beginning of the west end, I see a family of uh, three kids and a mother sleeping between the service road and the riprap stone bank on a little patch of grass there. Four of them lined up with blankets and uh, sleeping bags. And right close to the water was presumably uh, the father of the group. Uh, so nice family outing. Uh, and when I came back later, when in the daylight, they were still sleeping. And the other guy, the guy was still fishing. So hope they had a nice uh, trip. Um, so I just want to, uh, I just want to comment on my, my tip of the week is I, I want to supplement what I told you last week. I told you that a great way to take a, a hook out of the fish's throat, you know, it's it's easier when you, you hook the fish in the side of the corner of the mouth or, or in the lip, but uh, when he swallows it and the and the the lure is is down his throat, you can pick up the fish by his bottom jaw with your fingers on the outside and your thumb on the inside. But what I forgot to mention to you was that when you do that, you know, the, it, it paralyzes the fish temporarily, which is good because now the head jacks back and makes them say, ah, but it also temporarily paralyzes them, which means that when you reach in to get that hook out with your pliers and do some, maybe have to do some surgery, uh, it's going to be a, a safe uh, retrieval of the hook uh, because uh, he can't move. You know, if that fish is flopping around, there could be a, a loose, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, treble hook or, or some uh, some other dangerous uh, way to get hurt there. So, so make sure that you you hold them on the bottom jaw, and and that will uh, that will temporarily uh, prevent any movement. So until next time, catch a big one. That's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Moving over into Rhode Island, still a lot of emphasis on bluefin tuna fishing. Um, and yellowfin tuna fishing, so just offshore in general. But, you know, we haven't had the weather that we had the week before. It's been a lot windier, a lot lumpier out there, so not as many guys have made the run. Um, but when we get a nice weather day like today, today you could definitely get out there. Um, they are getting out there, and they are still finding fish. All the usual spots, the dump and tuna ridge and the gully and all that, have fish right now. And, uh, you know, we've even seen some smaller fish, some football-sized fish taken this week. So. That's exciting for the stand-up guys, or the spinning guys, I should say. Uh, heading back up to the mainland here, let's uh, check in now with TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Got a quick video for you from the uh, east side of the bay here, Maho Bay, up into the Taunton River, warm Bristol Barrington. Uh, got some good stuff happening. Lots of bluefish around. Uh, I think with this new moon tide that we just had, it really triggered up a good bite. And it's not only bluefish in there, there's lots of stripers in the mix. Uh, all the way out to the Sakonet, uh, such as Point, there's lots of stripers out front on the reefs. Uh, you get up into the bay, uh, definitely lots of bluefish, smaller blues, they're cocktail blues, but very fun to catch. Uh, also, uh, into the Tartan River, uh, as far as the power plant, all the way up uh, towards Dighton, there's tons and tons of peanut bunker and there's definitely no shortage of it. Uh, that's what those fish are feeding on right now. Um, there's other bait in the mix too. We got the rain bait, we got uh, the little minnow shiners, and uh, we also got some bay anchovies if you get further up into this kind of river. So there are great opportunities for every, pretty much every fish that we fish for. The scup bite is unbelievable still inside the bay and up front. 
Uh, there are some sea bass reported underneath the Maho Bridge. Uh, if you can get into that 70 foot range, um, there's also lots of sea bass out front in the 30 to 40 foot uh, in front of Newport, out in front of Little Compton, all the way around to Westport uh, and on the Breton Reef side. Uh, it's actually been really hot. So uh, if you can get out there, um, it's not only jigging, but the squid's working. Um, fluke bite, uh, I haven't seen that many reports, but there are still some fluke out there. I think a lot of the fluke are, are actually moved inside of the bay right now, and I haven't had a chance to target them inside the bay yet, but uh, this weekend I'll be doing that. Uh, I think they've gotten up into the shallow waters because all the bait is just confined inside the bay. Uh, so your opportunities for that are, are actually really good. Uh, getting to the, the freshwater uh, in the local area here, Swansea, Milford Pond, uh, the Warren Reservoir, uh, <clears throat> lots of uh, good size green bass, largemouth uh, to be had. Live shine is working really good. Uh, I've also gotten them on spinner baits and I've gotten them on three inch paddle tails. Uh, so pretty much it's a variety of everything. I think uh, if you can get your hands on some live shiners, uh, you'll do really well uh, in some of the freshwater ponds. Uh, my prediction's coming up ahead. It's going to just really blow wide open with uh, lots of bluefish and uh, a lot more stripers in the mix. Uh, there are a lot of stripers up in the Barrington River and I had an opportunity to catch a couple of those stripers. Uh, it was on an early morning bite and I uh, was just using a white top water four inch plug um, and that triggered that. And uh, those vi the fish are viciously feeding too. It's not like they were just popping at my plug. They were really attacking it like they're on the feed bag right now. And we know that they are. So uh, if you get out there guys, tight lines and uh, good luck. The news I'm hearing from the Newport area is that a new body of fish moved in uh, onto the reefs, especially the Brenton area and getting out toward Price's Neck and then even kind of leaking all the way over to like Elbow Ledge. Um, these fish are not giants. Uh, most of these fish are in the like 14 to 20 pound range with a few touching up into the low 30 pound class. Uh, the nighttime guys are getting them on eels, they're getting them three-way in soft plastics or bucktails, and the daytime guys are finding some action right at first light or on a cloudier day like today you might see it extend into mid-morning. A lot of those fish that are being caught in the daytime are being caught on small spooks like a uh, game on X-Walk or something like that. Uh, heading out toward Block Island, Here's a big fluke being taken south of the windmills. I heard of a 15 pounder taken this week. That is an absolute bona fide doormat. Um, sea bass fishing in Rhode Island hasn't been that popular this year. I think just because the regulations are kind of meager. You know, you've got a bigger minimum size and you've only got a two fish per person limit. So not a ton of guys are targeting them, but around Block Island has been one of the places where people have been having the best success. And then striper fishing out by block has been on the slower side this week. Um, I have heard that there's been a few good tides out there, but a lot of the days have been on the slower side. And when it gets like this, I would definitely not make that run without live eels. That's going to give you your best chance of getting one of those Block Island Giants. For a little bit more on that and some of the things that are happening up toward Point Judith, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. This week, we had some very good fluke trips and some fairly slow fluke trips. I'm working water from 70 feet to maybe 110 feet. Some of our best fish and biggest fish were 90 to 100 feet, um, fishing gulp and bellies. Today, I got a Mako on a fluke rig. Thing hit gulp, came out of the water, it was pretty cool. And, um, but today was a tough bite. That east wind kind of threw me off. Anyway, talk to you next week. Have a good one. And then heading along the South County beaches, we're getting a lot of bait coming out of Narragansett Bay. We're getting a lot of bait coming out of Point Judith Pond. We're getting a lot of bait coming out of the breachways. And that is firing up several different fisheries. We're seeing more small stripers along the breachways and the beaches. Seeing some, seeing an increase in the chub mackerel showing up in that area. And we're seeing an increase in inshore fluke. Most of the fluke that are being caught in the shallow water are below uh, keeper size. But if you head out, you know, 60, 75, 80 feet of water, you're going to give yourself a much better chance of getting some keeper size fish. Uh, for a little bit more on that and some of the other things that are going on in the western end of South County, let's toss it over now to Declan O'Donnell from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Fish has been pretty good down here. Uh, we got customers catching both sea bass and fluke. 
Um, some pretty good sized fish coming in. Uh, some of the fluke have been in deeper water, uh, smaller fish in tight. Uh, sea bass continue to get bigger and bigger. Bass fishing here locally has been great, mostly on live bait on the bottom. Um, some, some more fish blitzing up, uh, chasing sand eels, peanut bunker, things like that. Uh, we've had some reports of some tuna being seen inshore too, only a couple miles out chasing chub mackerel. Uh, that can be pretty exciting. So definitely carry a big, big rod on your boat if you're heading out. Uh, I never know what you'll see this time of year. Uh, some bonita should be showing up shortly. Uh, hopefully more and more as we get towards September. Uh, we just start seeing more fish get pushed along the beach. Uh, the fall run starting. Uh, it always starts in August, but it really kicks into gear in September. Uh, thanks again for including me in this week's video. Thanks. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Crossing the border over into Connecticut. Um, the race has has been the place. A lot of good fishing going on in the race right now. I was talking to uh, my counterpart here at the New England Fisherman, Dale Nicholson, the, our sales guy. He was out there over the weekend in his boat and uh, he said the fishing out there has been really, really good. Uh, a lot of really big bluefish, you know, up to like 16 pounds uh, coming out of there. They got some giant scup out of there. He said a lot of guys were fishing hard at slack tide for sea bass and they seem to be having good, making good catches out there. Uh, there's been Decent numbers of stripers out there, although I haven't heard of anything uh, really big, which is a little bit unusual for the race at this time of the year, but a uh, lot of fish around the slot, mostly just over. And um, he also saw some of what he thought were probably albies. I checked with him, I said, are you sure they weren't bonito? Uh, because there have been some bonito showing up here and there, especially with the chub mackerel. And he said, I couldn't guarantee that they were not bonito, but whatever they were, they were some kind of, you know, small tuna fish, and they were just airing out, completely blowing out of the water. Um, he made a play for him, threw a, a game on X walk at him, because that was the smallest bait he had with him, because uh, he was out there for blues and bass, and um, hooked up right away, but it ended up being like a 14-pound bluefish. So uh, we will never know the true identity of exactly what those were, but I think the main takeaway there is a lot of fish in the race, a lot of bait in the race, and... Uh, there's no reason to think that that's going to slow down anytime soon. Heading up toward the Connecticut River, really good bass fishing still in the area. Um, the one thing that we are hearing about is just more and more of these shark attacks. You know, guys hooking up to a good striper and then, like this video here from uh, Captain Mike Roy, uh, you know, a big brown shark or a dusky or something comes up and just mauls the striper. Uh, so, you know, kind of exciting, but a little eerie at the same time. For a little more on that and some of the other things going on in that region, let's toss it over now to the man himself, Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up, guys? For this week's Fisher Report, uh, today is the new moon. It's August 16th today, and we're halfway through August. We have two weeks left. Um, and like clockwork, the one thing we're starting to see, and, and you'll probably notice this if you're driving around, looking at your, your sonar, you're gonna to start to mark a lot of small bait. Um, and that usually always happens this time of year. And we're, I'm not gonna say we're in the pre-fall run yet, but it's gonna start, you're gonna to start to come across blitzes probably within maybe give it another week or two. You're gonna to start to see more schoolie blitzes, bluefish blitzes. Um, we've seen some good uh, bluefish blitzes already, um, not consistent yet. Um, the, uh, a lot of the reefs are holding nice black sea bass and bluefish, and they're spitting up juvenile butterfish, about the size of a dime. Um, the striper fishing for big stripers uh, remains consistent. Uh, if you want to get in on a big striper trip, contact us because we have a couple more weeks left, and um, then we're going to be ready for fall run. So get out there. Good luck. Now heading up the Connecticut River Valley, we're going to check in with Rowan Lytle, who I know is actually in Florida this week, but he said he's got some stuff to report, so let's check in with him. Hey everybody, uh, so this week I'm reporting not from Connecticut, but from, well, sunny's probably not the word for right now, rainy Florida. Um, but I am farming the report off from uh, Captain Noah Johnson, who has been out and about quite a bit on the river the last couple weeks. Now, mostly what he's been doing is uh, targeting carp on bait. Uh, he's had clients get quite a few fish and some, some nice size ones, some very large fish. Uh, he's mostly fishing pack bait. Uh, he goes into a spot and chums with ground bait uh, and then fishes 
just light spinning gear uh, with, with pack bait, which basically is a lead and a, uh, a hair rig, and you wrap that all in any kind of pack bait, usually uh, breadcrumbs with a little bit of like soda is often a good thing to mix in, and some corn. Uh, that could get you as many carp as you'd like. Uh, if you're having trouble finding fish, look for them crashing and jumping. Uh, that's a common way to find them. They'll use certain mud flats that are fairly deep, and you may not see them that well uh, in the water, but they might jump and crash at the surface. If you're seeing fish doing that in the Connecticut River, uh, that's usually what it is, with the exception of the sturgeon on occasion. Uh, but get out there, target some carp, uh, and good luck, everybody. Heading west out of the Connecticut River area, we're going to make a quick stop in Westbrook. We'll check in, check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Uh, we got mid-August fishing out there. We've got some birds working. We've got a lot of bait showing itself, mostly peanut bunker, some silver sides, um, some adult bunker around as well right now. So you're going to start to see more and more of those bird-focused blitzes, uh, particularly on outgoing tides, which tend to flush that bait out of the tidal creeks and rivers that they're hanging out in and get them into exposed water, which fuels those blitzes. Also, north winds can help with that too. Uh, striper fishing right now, it's really good. We've got a ton of schoolie action right now, adding into our big bass action. The big bass have been on pretty tight feeding windows, um, sometimes as short as 45 minutes to two hours of a tide. Um, so if, you're no, if you know you're in a spot that holds good fish, you may want to fish the entire tide to make sure um, that you're hammering them during that slim, potentially slim bite window still giant bluefish around um it's now getting into the time where we'd expect them to come back they never left they're still here there's some giants around um really big bluefish should be exciting that uh world's greatest bluefish tournament um coming up here soon uh bottom fishing has been a little bit tougher but we do expect it to pick up as the fall kind of pushes into um the forefront here uh sea bass are still deep um, fluke have been pretty inconsistent, but anglers are finding them. Um, more so recently, probably in the last few days or so, we've seen more more good fluke pictures and heard more good fluke reports here in the shop. Um, chub mackerel are around as well. We're starting to hear rumors of albies um, invading some of the Massachusetts shores, um, which gets us here in Connecticut and the Long Island Sound very excited. Uh, give us about three or four weeks or so before we should really start to expect to see those guys. But this is certainly the time of year where if you do want to fish the albie run, you want to be ready when it gets here. Um, we've got a ton of stuff in the shop here in Westbrook that can get you geared up for albie season. So um, consider swinging by. We can talk you through that. Um, otherwise, it's great out there. Uh, August does not by any stretch of the imagination mean that the fishing is slowing down. Um, I would argue that these next 10 weeks or so until Halloween are probably some of the best, most exciting weeks to be on um, our local water. So there's so much to catch out there. There's so much to do. Um, enjoy it. Soak in these warm days. Um, it's a great time to be out there. So good luck. And then heading out to the reefs sort of on that western mid-sound area. Um, talking to TJ from Rock and Roll Charters and some of the other guys that fish that area. Um, sea bass has been good off the ends of the reefs. There's been tons and tons of porgies in there. It's just been a banner year again for porgies. Uh, striped bass have been a little tougher at times just because the water temps are high, but the smaller fish, the fish that are you know mostly under keeper size, have been more than cooperative, and there's been some roaming schools of really big bluefish in the area as well. So plenty of things to catch in that area. Um, just want to be prepared for anything in case one species either doesn't want to cooperate or just doesn't show up. And then heading out to the extreme western part of the sound, lots of good fishing going on out there as well. Let's check in now with Max Finch from Fisherman's World for details on that. This past week, the diamond jigging bite and then bass and blues on top at 11B has been red hot. Our harbors are loaded with peanut bunker, the porgies are biting, and the fluke remains so-so. People looking for black sea bass are heading to our deep water wrecks. The bluefish are found at 28C, 11B, and then at nighttime and early morning hours on the higher tides, they've been coming in our harbors along our beaches to feed out all the peanut bunker that are around. I've seen anglers from shore, beaches, and our calf pasture pier doing really well from blues ranging from eight to like 14 pounds. And then anglers out on the boat, diamond jig and 11B and 28 has been phenomenal. And the bass and blues are coming up on top on the slower moving parts of the tide. The bluefish tournament is coming up at the end of the month. So remember, you gotta sign up in the shop or you can sign up online. And thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys this week in the New England Report. Hopefully it's gonna inspire you to get out there you know, I think within the next 10 days, the true influx of albies will happen. So just, you know, kind of hold your breath until then. 
but in the meantime, lots of fishing to be had. A lot of good striped bass fishing up on the north side of our range, you know, in Maine and down to Boston area. And, uh, you know, lots of interesting tuna things going on, especially those inshore tuna. I mean, chasing the chub mackerel right along the South County beaches. Well, not right along them, but within sight of the South County beaches. Uh, that's some exciting stuff as well. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full example of what we uh, what we do. Cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We got reports, we got articles, and we do everything. Freshwater, saltwater, we do inshore, offshore, kayak, stand-up paddleboard. It's all covered. Um, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing, and that 30 bucks will get you access to all the reports from Delaware all the way up to Maine. It'll get you digital access to the two editions that you don't subscribe to. So if you subscribe to the New England edition, you will get digital access to the other two editions in addition to uh, the New England edition. And with that, you're going to get 12 issues sent to your house, paper magazines um, sent to your house, and you're going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email. Again, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. If you're still not interested after you check out the website, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.